Welcome back, and again, a special welcome to our next guest. His name is Kevin Freeman. He is one of our regulars here at Securing America, I'm pleased to say. He is also the host of his own television program, Economic War Room, with Kevin Freeman. You can find it on Blaze TV, among other platforms. An absolutely superb program addressing the area of his particular specialization, economic warfare. He's the author of two best-selling books, Secret Weapon and Game Plan, and has a terrific blog, globaleconomicwarfare.com. Kevin Freeman, it's great to have you with us. Welcome back. It's my pleasure as always to have a chance to interact with you, Kevin, especially about topics that are really momentous, uh, one of which is a new executive order that President Biden has just uh, launched talking about how the United States government uh, is looking to proceed with respect to digital currency. Talk a little bit about what seems to be in the offing and its potential downside risks. Well, Frank, the inputs going into that executive order and then the implications are so huge. It's hard to, I'll try and boil it down. Bottom line, when Bitcoin was created, uh, we entered a new world of digital currencies. The question is, would the federal government or the governments around the world allow those currencies, which were a threat to their monetary control, or would they try and harness the huge technological abilities, capabilities, and use them for greater government control? And I'm afraid uh, both are being seen. They're trying to control the digital currencies that are being developed by liberty-minded people. And at the same time, they're using this as a mechanism for absolute control over every person. It's 1984, uh, like George Orwell never could have imagined. Yeah, on steroids. Um, so talk a little bit about that uh, second part, Kevin. There's uh, what they're, I guess, being called central bank cryptocurrencies. CB, um, CBDC, central bank digital currency. Digital currencies, excuse me, digital currencies. Um, what are they and how would they work uh, compared to how Bitcoin and, and other private sector cryptocurrencies have been operating? Well, first off, they're, they're electronic money. I mean, very few people pull cash out of their wallets to buy things anymore. You go to buy a car, you're going to sign some papers. It's all electronically transferred. You pay your bills online. So most everything has become uh, digitally transferred. The difference is we call what they're doing programmable money. And the reason is the Fed has been very blatant in saying this. They said, one think about all of the wonderful possibilities of controlling the economy if you can make money good for a certain period of time but not good after another period of time so it shows up in your bank account and you have ten thousand uh, dollars but it's has an expiration date on it it expires after june of this year or maybe it's not good until september because they want to control spending very tightly so that they can make our economy work the best it is central bank planning it, it is the very thing that the communists have long longed for. It is what uh, totalitarians would like to have. And it is individualized. It's not just, well, this money is good for 90 days. It could be good for you for 90 days, but good for someone else forever. Or maybe your dollars are worth only half as much, Frank, because you're of the wrong skin color as someone who has a different skin color and they're worth twice as much in their account. So you'd have an incentive to give to someone else because they could get more out of it. Or they could say, we've looked at your cholesterol because all the records are digital and online and we can look at Frank Gaffney's cholesterol. It's a little high and therefore you're trying to buy a steak at this restaurant. We suggest you get the tofu instead. Hmm. And your money won't pay for the steak, I think, is it your point. Work. Exactly. And, and Kevin, the, the, it's not just skin color. It could be your political orientation. It could be, you know, the people that you associate with. It could be, in other words, integrated into um, that other piece of uh, sort of super Orwellian control, the so-called social credit system that the Chinese Communist Party has not only implemented at home, but is now exporting abroad, some of it here under the guise of uh, digital medical cards and the like, um, vaccine, vaccine passports, passports, if you will. Yes. Yeah. And no, I just, wanted, I just wanted to close, it's close this thought. Uh, to the extent that this is in prospect, how close to being actualized do you think it is? 
the technology exists now. It will be introduced initially as a benefit. Everybody's going to get an extra $1,000 out to test the system. So everyone will sign up for it. It will then become mandatory at some point. The COVID game plan is shown us exactly how they do this. Two weeks to slow the spread and then everything shut down. But it's voluntary at first, but then it's mandatory. Same thing with the vaccines. What a wonderful thing. Get on the list. You should want to get the vaccine. And people fought to get on the list. But eventually it's knocking on your door and saying, you didn't get vaccinated. You can't fly in an airplane. You can't get this job. You lose your job that you do have. It, start, it will start very benign and it will ramp very quickly. This could happen within 12 to 18 months. And become extraordinarily controlling and inimical, obviously, to what's left of our freedoms. Kevin, we have about a minute left before we have to take a short break with you. Talk a little bit about an idea that you have been uh, pursuing in Texas that might give us an alternative approach here. Well, I, I, if I were marketing this properly, I'd say get the founder's secret. The founders of this nation planted in the Constitution a secret weapon that you could use to fight back against the digital tyranny. And they did. Article 1, Section 10. I did an entire program on this. It's out today at economicwarroom.com. And it talks about a cryptocurrency you can trust. And it literally was created and made possible by language put in our Constitution by the founders of this nation. It is the founder's secret. It is, but we give it free. I'm not trying to hype you or sell you anything. Go to economicwarroom.com, download the economic battle plan, and it goes into great detail on how we could have a cryptocurrency that is state-based, that is privacy protections, and doesn't have implications of tax, and it's fully backed by gold and silver. Wow. Sounds too good to be true, but I know coming from you, it is true. And it's one of the things that we prize about our partnership with you, Kevin Freeman, as you are constantly coming up with really important ideas, in this case, with an incredibly uh, valuable sort of uh, track record, going back to the founders, to provide in Texas specifically a currency alternative to uh, what might be an instrument of mass control by the federal government. We're going to talk more about that in the days ahead for sure. Kevin, when we come back, I want to talk to you about China, uh, another area that you focus on because it's waging economic, among other kinds of warfare against us. That and more with Kevin Friedman right after this. 